Hello, this is Hi, it's Mark Sargent. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Let's see. Oh, I see. I've just got your, your email here. Thank you so much for giving me a call. Yeah, 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 yeah. I figured, you know, sooner is better than later, and I have no idea what the time zone difference is between me and you. Isn't it? Is it late at night, or is it early in the morning? No, I'm actually, I work for our New York City Bureau. Oh, you're so, New York. Uh, oh, then I'm not yeah. worried. <laughs> no, it's just a little afternoon here. So, oh. uh, right. but, but thank you, because I um, appreciate the chance to get to speak with you. And I, I didn't know if you were the right person to call, but basically uh, we're working on a story it's for a uh, publication in Japan. Uh, and it's about uh, QAnon and the upcoming presidential election. I was reading a lot about uh, mm. the overlap between uh, flat earth uh, uh, thinking and uh, QAnon. And I was wondering if, if that was something that you had dipped your toes into at all, or if that was something that you oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean if yeah if, if you're in the conspiracy world uh especially let's let's put it this way if you're into flat earth you yeah you don't shut down any conspiracy things i i used okay. to i i used to tell people it's like um beforehand if somebody came to me and said oh yeah i know this guy um who swears that bigfoot had elvis's baby uh, I, it's norm, two, five years ago, I would have laughed you out of the room. Now it's like, yeah, you know what? I'll give you a couple minutes. Why not? <laughs> so yeah, we're interesting. We, we we've got an opinion on just about everything. Yes, including QAnon. So and the and Do you I, mind? I, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to ask if it would be okay if I record our conversation. Absolutely, for absolutely. You know what? Okay, I will hit the record. I'll hit the record button on this side as well. And uh, you. you know, in case in case yours fails, how's that? Well, I appreciate that. And then you'll have, uh, you know, your record as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all cool. Well, I mean, normally, yeah, so it's, Martin, if anyone... Ask how old you are. I am 52. 52? Yep. Okay, thank you. Sorry, the line just cut out for a second. No worries. And can you, can you tell me a little bit about... Um, I don't know, I guess... So I, I wouldn't call myself... Uh, I don't even know the the terminology um so yeah. i hope that you won't take offense but i i wouldn't think of myself as like a uh, conspiracy um um minded uh, how how dare person. you use that term no, no, no what no, how, but, how, um, but, how that's not offensive not even slight well no no but i well like right now i feel like everybody is uh so polarized and i i do feel like everyone has a, a right to their own point of view and what you were just saying about you know, like giving uh, credence ideas that maybe in in, uh, in a few years ago you might not have, oh, have well, thought about. Your, not your only open that, to, I feel like there there's like a lot of, and I, I'm curious about your your opinion of this because this is just my own yeah. personal point of view. That um, a lot of us are talking about the same things but using different language yes to describe it right now and and uh, i think that this like finger pointing and saying you know like these uh fringe people are, are lunatics is getting us nowhere and that actually a lot of uh stuff that's being discussed in niche communities online uh has to do with the way that mainstream media narratives don't take into account a lot of concerns of uh the the people who read the the news and are not finding uh their own view of of reality reflected right. in the coverage is that do you does that make sense uh, yeah yeah that, it, it, would... it does i used to joke about that mainstream media would never use that what i call it, there's what there are media sanctioned conspiracies and then there's everything else so, in fact, media, okay. media, we all know full well, you know, it, that there are conspiracies and I mean, legitimate conspiracies in um, in politics and business and sports and entertainment, and even journalism and science. But the media always uses different terms. They will use the word scandal unless somebody unless there, somebody dies, in which case it's some sort of tragedy. And then everything else okay. is, is considered a conspiracy. Um, the, it's really weird watching, watching mainstream do it. But this year, 2020, all bets are off because ever since, okay. especially during the whole fake news thing, right? 
you know that fake news wasn't even really a term until the uh, the current administration kind of kind of put it right. out there and not to go on a little tangent but I love when people come to me and ever say, oh, there's no such thing as fake news. I go, okay, really? Resolve these two statements. Everything on CNN is absolutely true. And everything on Fox News is absolutely true. <laughs> you can't because, but you, depending on your political leanings, you are going to, you know, it, like you said, it's so polarized. You, you mm. absolutely believe in fake news. It just depends on what side of the fence you're on. Are you blue team or are you red team? Right. Oh. And so... I, I want to know um, where, how did you start, uh, and please like use the language that that you uh, oh, yeah, prefer, yeah. but um, no, but I want to, I want to use the correct terminology, but like, when did you start getting into conspiracy theories? Like, would you even call them conspiracy? Like, when did you start researching conspiracies? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and by the way, you know, even the clinical definition, I mean, we all know, you know, like the court system, like, you know, th people are convicted of conspiracy all the time. It's, it's part of our legal system. Okay. If three or more people yeah. are charged in a crime, the same crime, uh, if it's something either uh, uh, un illegal or unethical, it's considered conspiracy. I know this firsthand. And so, so like if you robbed a bank, for example, you know, you robbed a bank right now, you would be charged with armed robbery. However, if you and four of your friends robbed a bank, you'd be convicted of two things. You'd be convicted mm -hmm. of armed robbery and conspiracy to commit armed robbery. So just, just let's throw that out there as far because I know you're curious yeah. about terms. Um, when it comes to the general conspiracies, I am was, again, I'm a little older, so I'm in the same boat as a lot of people, and that is nobody even really cared about conspiracies up until the movie JFK from Oliver Stone from... Uh, and what? it was the movie, yeah, not it was a, the, it was a... the actual assassination. Oh, okay. yeah, because that was, it was, it was pre-internet. If you were pre-internet, conspiracies were very, very tough to, to come by. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, yeah, there were some like whispers. If you went to like a UFO convention, you know, pre-internet, you know, that's where you saw your early conspiracies. But other than that, was, you, you had, you had to buy a book somewhere or, or in okay. this case, watch a movie. There was no movies or really anything that talked about this up until, um, I mean, yeah, there was the, the like the TV movie, um, Roswell with Martin Sheen from the, like the mid eighties, but 1990, Oliver Stone's thing was, was the big one where you know jfk and it was done very very well very very clever where he interspliced his footage with actual footage and and, and images and it, it, i look i saw it in a packed house and everyone that walked out of there was pretty surly so but then you know after that there wasn't much didn't much happen until the internet started ramping up and then the whole 9 11 thing happened and mm. the difference was the 9-11 happened as the internet was just coming in, into its own. And people were putting up websites and YouTube wasn't even a thing yet. And you know, there, were certain, there were a few rabbit holes you could go down. But remember, the internet wasn't very big. It wasn't very broad. So right. People... That was the internet of like my uh, early adolescence, I remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the slow speeds. I mean, when high-speed internet took over that's when everything changed that's when you could access the the difference the reason why conspiracies are so amplified right now is because you have social media you have high-speed internet and you have six billion smartphones where people can you know exchange information very very quickly and misinformation can can you know rumors can snowball oh my god so fast and you know people sometimes what's the term uh, fake news tends to travel faster than than mainstream news because we you know the, mm -hmm. the people love people love a mystery human beings as a rule love a mystery they love unsolved things they they love hidden things and uh, so that's how i got into it you know i i and because i never got married and had kids just for various reasons um i had a lot of time on my hands and i was in the tech field i taught proprietary software for a number of years and because of that, I went down, I had, you know, I had access to, you know, just the internet at, at will. And I went down just about every rabbit hole I could, I could think of until, you know, finally around mid 2014, I kind of ran out. I ran out of conspiracies. It's like, oh, man, nothing yeah. really. I mean, I wasn't one of those tinfoil hat, you know, live in a bunker in, in, you know, somewhere in the hills in Idaho. It was just kind of one of those things where it was a casual, it was a casual thing. And that's, 
if you saw the documentary or I don't know how how you how did you find me anyway? Uh, the Wired article that just came out. Oh, what? Oh, that. Oh, yeah, that thing. I remember that guy. Um, yeah, the Wired article. Um, so you never saw the documentary on Netflix? No, I haven't yet. That's ah, all right. So, um, okay. but that's how I got into it. And so that's in 2014. That's when I, I, you know, had just completely ignored the whole flat earth thing. But this year, I got to tell you, because, you know, we haven't been doing convent, nobody's been doing conventions or conferences. We're going to do our first one and probably our only one of the year in South Carolina next month. And and only be, only because the, the venue is not requiring masks. And that's a whole nother conspiracy thing. But uh, the I've done a, a series of rants this year. Uh, maybe I'll send you the link uh, when we're done on my, on my channel, yeah. which, which goes over the election, the uh, the virus in great detail. In fact, I did a, a big thing on the election recently, saying that it doesn't really matter at this point. There's going cities are going to burn that week and i'm not trying to be a doomsayer i'm saying look it's it's so polarized at this point it's going to get super weird and super ugly no matter what happens if if the election is even decided that week which i can't even guarantee at this point yeah it's looking less and less likely yeah uh, given the complications yeah would you be able to i know this is a tall order because it's so detailed no. But would you be able to give me kind of a rough idea of how how you see uh, Q and and various other conspiracies impacting the U.S. presidential election? Could you kind of give me your point of view? Oh yeah, yeah, of, yeah. When it when it, when it when it I don't think Q is really going to affect. They don't have to affect the election anymore. Q. Q. <laughs> QAnon was a nice idea in theory. And it sort of evolved, actually, from the whole JFK thing, from uh, the movie from years and years ago, which I don't know if you ever remember watching the Oliver Stone movie. Mm -hmm. But there was this great montage where there was a, a deep operative inside the government. He only went by, like, you know, like a deep throat type of character. And yeah. he was played by uh, Donald Sutherland. And he kind of laid sure. it out. He was the insider that laid it out for everybody. It's like, here's how everything went down. And QAnon seemed to be sort of a collection of people supposedly that were giving much, but no one gave out their identity. You know, the whole point of QAnon is you remain anonymous. And mm -hmm. it was an interest, and people kind of built it up. The legend became bigger than what it really was. You know, I, I've never found anything from QAnon that actually gave any, you know, it's like, okay, here's what's going to happen on September 5th at 10 a.m. in this city, blah, you know, we, we never saw any of that. They, um, like any rumor mill, QAnon seemed to be more theater than substance. And I'm not trying to be mean here. I mean, there's a lot of people in the conspiracy world that absolutely agree with me, um, which is that they kind of like the, um, I love movie references, pop culture references, uh, the whole Braveheart thing, the William Wallace, right? Mm -hmm. By the time William Wallace actually showed up on the battlefield, people thought he was 10 feet tall, you know, and, and you know, could slay people with a single blow and, and stuff like that. And QAnon just wasn't, it's not the case. They are, they're, they're an idea, but I think it's one of those, it's kind of like the, um, people kind of try to grab the mantle of QAnon and, you know, like, it's this ethereal thing where there's a whole bunch of people that say, oh, we're part of QAnon, but we're not going to tell you who we are. And we're going to give you some ambiguous information, but we're not going to give you details. And we're going to say we did this and say we influenced this. And it's like, eh, sorry, I've been in the conspiracy world too long. I, I just don't see it. I mean, if they had any decent credibility, uh, you know, as far as you know, really being insider information, that's that's the whole claim of QAnon. They, some people think they're hackers that can influence stuff, right? You know, they're Eastern Bloc. Uh, there's some people that think, oh, there are people who work inside the government. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So we'll, but we'll, I'm sorry, just sh let's circle back. Do I think, Q no, it, go ahead. Do I think the QAnon is going to influence the, the election directly? No, no, I don't. Um, I think that Q, what about I think the, all the people, the people who've uh, come around to that kind of thinking, though, do you think it'll influence their the way that they might vote? <sighs> well, and I'll send you some of the links. Unfortunately, from my circle in 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 the conspiracy circles, 
we don't actually believe that that it's not really an election it's more of a selection and i didn't come up with that little phrase and it's it's catchy but i didn't do it it's that the the at the highest levels, you're the federal, the federal, the president is chosen way in advance, or at least the top two candidates, and maybe you know the powers that be up above them, because the president is really on this grand scale of things isn't that high of of the food chain, uh, you know, on the, high on the food chain, and I could give you some some great examples of that, but so how people how people vote is it really going to make a difference, or is this part of a bigger chaos thing that's coming down the pipe? I mean, I, I've okay. said in, in various rant, rants that it's like, okay, why exactly, again, I, I don't vote either way, literally. I, I do not vote on Republican or Democrat. I'm, I'm completely objective mm -hmm. about this. It's like, why, for example, if Trump, which is, he, let's come on, let's face it, he's a reality, he's a, he's a C-list reality television star at best. You know, the producers of The the Apprentice, the first ones to say that. It's like, yeah, when we found him before The Apprentice, he was just a lonely guy sitting in a beat up office in New York. You know, he was he was done and they revived him and turned him into this icon. But mm -hmm. but, but Biden was just getting crushed in the early Democratic debates. But then they couldn't come up with any other candidate to supplant him. So it's like, OK, we're going to circle around to Biden. And so I, I, I was not shy about saying, look, if you wanted to create a candidate that would you know go up against an actor why didn't you create a better actor the left the, like the entire um actors guild in hollywood right is, is almost entirely left so why didn't you get i mean oprah was thinking of running you know and she was nominated for stuff way back in the day she's a heck of an actress george clooney mm -hmm. why, or i don't know any actor that ever played the play the president I mean, we, you know, we elected a TV president. Why didn't you go along with that? I'm sorry, I go off on rants. You probably want more specific no, it's, answers. It's an, interesting, it's an interesting point. Do, would you describe yourself as like a, a QAnon adherent or a, a Q, QAnon believer? Or has it influenced your own thinking uh, I used to, at I, all, some of the information? Yeah, okay. No, that's a good, that's a good question. I believed in it. I was a fan. Of QAnon, I love okay. the i I love the idea of QAnon, but for me, I was always looking for the um the meat, the meat of it, the the substance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like okay, if you, you're going to be QAnon and you're going to say you say mysterious ethereal things, then you got to be able to back it up with something. You know, to where QAnon say, see, we told you, we you know we predicted this. It's it, when you're doing a QAnon idea, you've got to be able to predict stuff. Or say that you have advanced knowledge on events that that then transpire, and I just never saw it, never, never saw mm -hmm. it, not, not not once. And yeah, I know that. Believe me, believe me when I say the the QAnon thing, which has been kind of going around mainstream recently, you know, more more so this yeah. year than than any year. It's not nearly as potent in our circles as it used to be. Uh, if you would have gone, you know, three years ago, people were like, oh, yeah, QAnon, that's that's the stuff, man. That's the real deal. Nowadays, it's like, eh, QAnon, like, eh. We, we just, I mean, again, it's it's an it's an interesting thing to float around in mainstream, but I, you know, show me show me something they've um, they've actually accomplished. So what are what are you what kind of conspiracies are you following uh now where where's um, the big ones where, where you mean you like getting, yeah where are you getting information that that you think is you know pertinent to our our situation here um well if you're talking about current conspiracies the the, the big things well there's only two well there's the three big headlines. I'm not even talk. We're not even going to go into the Supreme Court thing. That's a whole other deal. That's that's a, that's a conspiracy in the making. We'll see how that fa okay. pans out. Uh, the big three, of course, are the virus, um, BLM, and uh, we'll just call it the protests or the riots, and the election. Those are the three big ones this year. And there's no real secret information being gleaned from anywhere. It's it's all just um, you know what what. So we're... how do you feel about all of that stuff? How is it how is it working in in your opinion? What what makes uh, conspiracy an element of? Oh okay. Of any of um, in in the, okay, well, let's do the big one first, which is you know okay. the the Amer America and 160 countries basically shutting down. Um, the the virus. I am a huge. I have a bunch of friends in the healthcare industry. 
And they all told me the same thing, which is, um, why is everything moving so slow? Meaning if you're going to tell somebody in the beginning of the year, you're going to say, oh, look, by the way, there's going to be a 1% death rate like it was with the Spanish flu. And very, very clear. And, and if you're over the age of 60, it's going to be 3%. That's, those are huge numbers. I mean, that's three and a half million people dead in the United States alone. Um, worldwide, there'd be 78, right now, maybe 79 million. That's a lot of people. And then you roll it back and you say, you know, a couple months later, okay, well, it's, it's not going to be 1%. It's going to be half percent. Oh, well, it's going to be um, a third of a percent and it's quarter. And now we're talking about numbers, you know, we're in month, you know, we're wrapping up September and it's abysmal. It's ridiculously low, it's surprisingly low for considering what you've shut everything down with. Not to mention everybody that's uh, supposedly died has had underlying symptoms which I did a rant on. I said, look, find me people that actually have been struck down. That's, that's the big mm -hmm. one. And so you're saying, okay, well, there's their conspiracy. Well, yeah, there is because you, you don't shut down for those sort of numbers. Um, in fact, there's a rant that I'm going to be doing uh, probably in two weeks. I'm going to call it the, uh, the 10 mile an hour virus. And you'll, you'll get this, which is okay. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, full well that if we change the speed limit in all roads to 10 miles an hour, that we could save millions of people worldwide millions of in you know deaths of, of car you know people running to cars people running to bicycles hitting pedestrians we know we could save all those lives so why don't we we know we could do it so why don't we and it's like well because the economies would shut down everything would be crippled nothing could ever get done nothing could, it would take forever to ship anything no one would drive anywhere the whole thing would just shut down so, okay, but so there, you can put a price on human life. Yes, you can. It's the cost of doing business. Why did you shut down the entire country for something that didn't appear to be remotely as lethal? It's, it's, it's conspiracy in the works. That's what everyone's been looking at on our side, which is, okay, why are we doing this? Follow that up with um, the protests, which, is, you know, why, why do you allow protests? You know, the, the Portland thing, which is not too far down the road from me. Uh, let them go for a hundred, hundred days. You know, there seems to be this perfect storm of stuff that's happening where, and the protests were really just kind of a polarization of the election process, which goes into the whole thing. If, if Trump wins, I know I'm jumping around here, different stuff, but it's one of our big conspiracies, which is there seems to be a destabilization of the country, which is if Trump mm -hmm. wins democratic cities, every, de every blue city will burn. We, we know this. You know this. I mean, it's like San Francisco, Los Angeles, Portland, Seattle, Chicago, New York, to a lesser degree. I don't know how many people are left in New York to, to burn it down. Uh, they will, they'll burn. They'll, they will riot in the streets to no end because of the polarization. Uh, it feels like Trump was elected to be a polarizing figure. And if Biden wins, they'll treat it kind of like uh, winning the Super Bowl or the World Cup, which they'll still riot. You know, the, the, in fact, the average person, because they don't know much about the political process, <clears throat> they will, um, the, they don't realize that Trump is literally still in the White House for two months after he loses. It's not like right. he's given a cardboard box, like, sorry, you got to go. He's there till January. So but the average person doesn't know that. They, they think, oh, well, just, you know, this transition it happens right away. And so there'll be protests outside the White House, you know, asking him to like leave immediately. And it's... Mm -hmm. Sorry, those three things. It's a busy year for the conspiracy world because we don't know where to turn. Everybody's heads on a swivel right now. You, but who do you think is is behind all of that? Because to me, that's like the definition of, the, of a conspiracy. But maybe I have that wrong. Is that that this would all be part of like a, an orchestrated? Okay, plot? I'll, is that I'll, how you, I'll give it to you. It? I'll, do you want? To, okay, I'll, I'll. I I will say. I don't mind saying it. I don't know if you'll be able to print it. <laughs> I, but no, I don't, I don't know if we'll be able to print either, but I will be transcribing our interview and sharing oh, no, it that's... Uh, with our New York bureau chief, um, who's very, very interested. And he's um, Japanese from Tokyo. Um, and I think, you know, whatever we don't print, I think he would really appreciate oh, no, no, the kind of that's, help no, understand. No, yeah. 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 I'll give you I'll give you all the insight you want. Um, in this case, look, there is something I, I talked about. Oh, God, at least a year ago now. But I've been I've been actually worried about it since 2010 in the financial crisis, which is that you've heard of the term the new world order. 
um, yeah. which is way older than the uh, the whole QAnon thing. It goes all the way back. Uh, George Bush Sr. coined it in a speech years ago where he was talking about, you know, the rule of law. And and it's an interesting idea. The New World Order says that, you know, that the whole world should be really under one banner, a one overarching banner, not the UN flag, but an overarching banner. How do you do that? How can you do that? Well, the problem has always been the United States. The United States has always been rebellious in that in that sense. We we do our own thing. We always have, you know. It's like we're, we're you know we're the cool kids. We you know even though we're not, you know we we get to do whatever we want. You guys you know, like the metric system, a perfect example. You know you try to introduce the metric system in the United States in the late seventies, and we were having none of it. <laughs> it's like the rest of the world goes on the metric yeah. system. It's like no 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 inches pounds mile. <laughs> you know it's like we we prefer we're these keeping, we're keeping the old ways yeah the metric system that's for all those europeans what, what was my quote i said europeans with all their uh fancy with our, their high fashion and fancy cheeses we don't need that you know we're i mean come on you, the united states invented rednecks we don't we don't have any cho so how do you what do you do to you because know, the united states you can't take them on militarily how do you make the united states a like the rest of them how do you make them a an average world power mm -hmm. it's not easy to do i mean you've got to do it financially you've got to you've got to rip out the underpinnings you i mean there what was the thing back in 2016 there was like 14 million millionaires in the united states so you got to get rid of a lot of that if you can but the big thing is you've got to the the old tricks are still the best tricks and that is divide the house which is and okay. which, which has been brilliant which is and if you want to say who that's it's one of the big secrets in the conspiracy world which is nobody knows exactly mm -hmm. exactly who there are tons of groups and i know you've probably heard of them um everyone from oh i don't know, let me, i'll just rattle off a few uh, the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschild Group, the Vatican, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Jewish Cabal, it goes on and on, the, the Masons, it goes on and on and on. Who is at the okay. top? Who is at the top? Nobody knows, but that's deliberate. You you know, the first rule of power has never, ever changed, which is stay hidden. You cannot be the puppet masters and be the puppets at the same time. You know, you can't be on stage. The, okay. the, the curse of being at the highest, highest levels is you have to be um, hidden because you can't. The, the, the saying is um, you can't be overthrown if they don't know who you are. You know, you know what I mean? So, I mean, okay. king, kings can be overthrown. Presidents can be overthrown. Coups can happen if they have a target. If they don't have a target, if they don't know who you are, pfft, you're, you're perfectly safe. But that is the curse. So you could be walking by somebody from the Illuminati on the street, never know who they are. Never in a million years know who they are because that's that's the great the great secret of it. Um, so, but this year, I mean, it seems like that's, that's what's happened. I mean, you create this, this virus thing to put all economies in a stall, the United States maybe more than most. Uh, you create riots in the streets. You create, uh, you know, or you just help it along. It didn't take much. And then you create the most polarizing election in the history of elections. I mean, I've never, I've never seen an election like this ever. And I'm a, I'm a big s student of that whole thing where, you know, I, yeah. I, it's, it's, it seems like a real unprecedented moment. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about this. It's, it's, have you, I've never seen an election where both candidates literally, I mean, back in the spring were saying, oh, by the way, if I lose the other guy cheated, <laughs> it's like, what? Okay, first off, we haven't even gotten to the stage where the on a single vote has not even close to being cast, and you're already saying that that the, you're already calling fraud in advance. Um, right. Plus, plus, come on, Trump is he? They're letting you know presidents don't write their own speeches, and they're just letting him take shots and just infuriating everybody. I mean, he, the left, I mean, I wrote, I, I read an, um, a letter. I'll send you the link to this too. I'll send you a link of, of different, different rants I've done recently. Please do. I'll share them with my coworkers. Oh, you'll, you'll love this. There was a, there was a letter written by, um, a woman. She posted it on Facebook, R works right down the street from here. I mean, on this Island in a rural Island, North of Seattle. And it was, mm -hmm. I think two pages on all the things she hates. And she never mentioned him by name about him. She wouldn't even say his name everything she hated about him and i and i did this random going look this is what you're you're looking at 
this is just a, a, a just a random woman in the middle, you know, in the corner of Washington, the corner of the country, right? She isn't even the most vocal. And that's what we're going into in November. And people have said, oh, yeah, what's going to happen in 2021? I go, uh, I don't can't tell you because I, I can't look past November. I, I can't. Right. Oh, sorry. Let me throw in one more thing for you real fast, which is sure. the um, the tied to the virus. The big thing about the virus also, is, the reason why the, the, the conspiracy crowd is so hyped up about it is um, is the vaccine more than anything you know people have been you know okay. ranting and raving about the masks you know should i wear a mask shouldn't i wear a mask no no, no. it's and i've been trying to give them perspective it's like no it's this isn't about the mask the mask was just to see if you do it what the big thing is and they've done all sorts of polls social media is a brilliant thing in that regards and you can find out stuff in real time you know you don't have to wait for the census to come back which is when we roll out a vaccine will you take it and will that vaccine be tied to a finan to financial systems? Meaning, will mm. you need verification of a vaccine to do stuff? And that is okay. that is a huge that is probably the biggest worry of the uh, of the conspiracy crowd is that I mean they're already saying it's like we'll we'll hide in the freaking woods, <laughs> you know we'll we'll buy you know we'll basically go off people will go off grid. To avoid this because mm -hmm. because they're worried about it. It's like, okay, why are you pushing this so hard? Why are you pushing a vaccine for a virus that hasn't really done that much damage? And why are you tying the vaccine to the financial system? Well, it is one of those tricky New World Order type of dystopian Orwellian things. Whereas the ultimate goal of any power system is to control a, a population at its micro level. You don't leave anything to chance. A controlled economy, a controlled population. I mean, it's just, it's simple, it's simple power structure stuff. I mean, yeah. th that's what you do. I mean, you don't want, you don't want the, you don't want random things to happen. You don't want a population to riot. You don't want them to get out of line. You want them to do exactly what you tell them to. Well, you know, human spirit's a tough nut to crack. <laughs> and there's a, there's a bunch of people out there, you know, it's like, don't tread on me. Don't take away my rights. And just gets weird yeah anyway what else that, so much of what you're saying rings so true to me and then there are other parts that i have more questions about than i think um i have time for today because i want to um make sure that i can send this to my boss before he writes his article oh yeah yeah, yeah. To, uh, go, um, go ahead and... but can i can i ask about your um your flat earth uh beliefs i am i'm curious about uh your your views on that subject and i hope that you won't take this the wrong way i just um when we were talking in the beginning yeah. uh we mentioned time difference and i was wondering like how how does that work um, oh how do time zones on a, work on a flat earth no 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 it's a no it's a great question and by the way um when i talk about flat earth the the reason why i concentrate on flat earth is because the uh -huh. general population doesn't understand simulations Meaning I am okay. a huge fan of simulation theory. Uh, science is a big fan of human simulation theory. Um, just about every game, every entertainment simulation, every military simulation we create is on an absolutely flat square grid. Got and it. So okay. That's, now this makes a lot more sense. Yeah. That's where, that's yeah, where it starts. I, I mean, the Matrix, okay. is, the Matrix is 21 years old and not a lot of people, they're like, oh, it was a good movie series. They didn't get it. They didn't understand. It's mm -hmm. like, no, 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 The Matrix is absolutely possible from a technology standpoint. But you still have to start somewhere. And so it's like, look, I mean, it's the, it, that is the ground floor where I start people. I go, look, it's flat. It's absolutely flat. There is no curvature anywhere. You just think you've seen the curvature. I've said so many people tell me um, that they, oh, I've seen the curvature from an airplane. It's like, oh, really? Because Neil deGrasse Tyson on stage, and here's the clip for you that has said on on no uncertain terms that you can't even see the um uh the curve from the red bull jump which is why he made the statement mm. so how did you see it from an airplane and that is the orwellian five lights four lights it's not that you see the curvature it's that you want to see it because you told it you were told it was there and so when, and when it comes to time zones what i try to tell people is look i know the models we 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 put out there the sun on the models looks like it's about a thousand miles mo wide no it's tiny it's maybe 50 miles wide that's how you get time zones the light source is so incredibly small and close that it just goes off into the distance it never sets 
it just goes off in the distance and just fades away through the atmosphere, which has got a thickness to so it. So from your point of view, yeah. we're, we're living on a flat Earth, but the round Earth is part of the simulation. Well, the round, it is. The round, the no. round Earth... And it, and by the way, we never use the word round because, you know, like a dinner Sorry. dinner. No, it's all right. No, no, it's fine. You don't have to apologize. You can't offend me. Okay. <laughs> the um I know it's a generational thing, but you can't you can't offend me. The um Okay. Uh we don't use the word round because like a dinner plate is round. We use globe, ball, or sphere. Round is kinda like our thing. Got it. Um we, yeah, I think that we're in basically a snow globe, you know, a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And that it was so big and so complex that we, even our best and brightest, didn't figure literally didn't figure it out till about 1960. And when they did, they're like, ah, "We're just going to keep a lid on this, no pun intended, until um, until we can find a way to introduce it to the public." And we were allowed to do this. You know, the flatter thing spread. The reason why you're even talking to me is because the the mainstream media, or I should say, social media, a lot. You know, they promoted this for years. I mean, YouTube promoted mm -hmm. us nonstop for three years straight. I mean, recommended us incredibly. They could have shut us, stunted us in two seconds. So why they allow us to do it? I'm not. I'm still trying to work that one out. But yeah, that's that's what I believe in, and it. I I just kind of put the question. I didn't. You know, everybody hates flat Earth to start. I made a series of videos. I gave up. You know, I tried to prove. I tried to to, to shut it down to kill flat Earth for nine months. And then I gave up in the beginning of 2015, made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues, put it out on the internet with all my contact information, yep. said, hey, academics, people out there, tell me where I'm wrong. And all these people came back and said, no, 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 you're not wrong. Here's why. And it just kind of blossomed into this thing where it just just went. I mean, hell, I did um, I did conferences in seven countries last year. I uh, you know, did a did a commercial in Melbourne, uh, three books, um, so many l cool things I've gotten to do since then, and it's all and all because the the flatter just kind of took me there, and but uh, yeah, I absolutely believe it. It's it's not a parody. It's not ironic. It's people. It's I I believe it. But again, I also believe in something deeper than that, which is I believe that because I've told people I go if it's flat and it's enclosed, it's probably digital. It's, you know, the double slit experiment screams that this, okay. this place is a simulation. Uh, you know, look at the movie The 13th Floor, not The Matrix, but The 13th Floor, which was a, based on a book um, from the 60s called Simulcron 3, which was it when as you're building your own simulations, you start to figure it out. It's like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> what what if I'm in a simulation? And that's where that's what all entertainment has been leaning towards anyway so interesting mm. do you on in all of your um travels and connections do you know anybody who's still like a a really serious QAnon adherent i know that you're saying you know the the movement is kind of waning um but if you were able to put me in touch with somebody who's uh a uh, real a like a huge uh, QAnon believer yeah um and i know they might not want to talk to me no 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 if, there, um, there might there might be a guy um, okay. And, or, and if he doesn't, if he doesn't know, then nobody knows. Um, it would be um, uh, David Weiss. In fact, he's in your time zone. Uh, from... Would you, do you have contact info for him that you might be able to share, or would you be able to reach out to him and yeah, ask yeah, yeah, if he yeah, might yeah. have a couple let, minutes later today? Let me um, here. Let me see if I can find him real fast. One sec. I've got his Skype. Thank in. you so much. Yeah, no worries. Uh, David Weiss. Let's see here. Let's see if he's around. Hey, um, a reporter from a Japanese newspaper wants to talk to you. Uh, you know, I, I'll get uh, heads up. I will. In fact, what I'll do is. I will find him. I, I've got his email, David Weiss, dtweiss at gmail.com. Uh, just got a message. I will reply. I'll go uh, David Weiss. Weiss. Email. dtweiss at gmail.com. David Weiss. Uh, and then. I'll 
carbon him on it as well. I will send it to you and him. I forgot his phone number. Usually we just we just talk through Skype. Um, oh, okay. But no, no, it's no worries. So I just sent I just sent him a thing through Skype saying, "Hey, heads up," and then I, I you'll see the email I sent him as well. Again, okay. I don't know. It's going to be tough to find a hardcore QAnon follower, just a dedicated follower, just because. I mean, look again. Yeah. You know, they used to be they used to be thing. It's not that they're waning. It's just that I, for whatever reason, especially in 2020, they're. I don't. I never see posts from them. I mean, there's. You know, I, I'm tied into you know most of the big forums, and I just. I just. I have. I have. They've been notably absent this year which is well there's been a big there's been a big crackdown uh with facebook um oh well that too sure twitter yeah Yeah. so i i can't tell like how much of it is you know natural and how much of it is is due to that like you said how how much um youtube uh it helps uh your videos get off the ground right in the in the beginning Uh, i think those platform changes really make a or have the potential to make a huge difference right um, i mean again you, I, yeah, might, you might be able to find someone I, I look i've got an opinion on QAnon, but it's not it depends what you want to go with do i think the QAnon is going to affect the election though no they don't have to the the election is whatever's going to go down with the election now i mean you're going to see all sorts of rumors you're going to hear rumors about hackers from just about every country that's out there um, you're mm-hmm. gonna you're gonna have accusations from both sides of the of the fence saying that oh the Republicans stunted this or the Democrats tried to disrupt this, um, and there nothing is going to be decided that week. I guarantee that much. Um, it'll, it'll yeah. I mean that seems to be the only thing that anybody can agree on. Yeah, which is what <laughs> how you know, yeah you know yeah and after that then then what and you do you tie it up in committee for for weeks on end? Does Nancy Pelosi? actually become the interim president because it doesn't get decided and then and then what you know i mean i just we're we're in uncharted territory here because you know we have we have no frame of reference for for what's gonna what's gonna happen but again QAnon, they're gonna it's gonna be minor by comparison just giving you a heads up you're you're just to make sure that like i i'm not getting this wrong right my impression of what you've told me is that your your belief is that we're living in a uh, simulation yep. the matrix yep. uh unveiled uh, the basics of, of that yep. we uh the q is just a group of people uh who were releasing information online about this larger plot right uh from the new world order right. uh, and donald trump is really just kind of uh puppet yep. and we we don't know the the full thrust of it because of the nature of power and the shadowy yeah yeah why why would you time. you know okay yeah the the, the moves right. being made on the chessboard you know there's been moves we have no idea why and uh but but q anon yes so interesting it just for me it, which is not a point that, like not as a journalist speaking yeah but just as a a person my own, uh, I think, biases just tend towards everything being so much more chaotic and less coordinated. Well, no, you're and right. I, I think that, yeah. The, uh, it, Sorry? The, the mob, you know, the, the general population is very, very difficult to control. I mean, there's been wonderful okay. references made over the years about the mob is the, the general public is basically this giant lumbering beast, which you can't truly control. You can only guide in certain directions. Um, and yeah, best laid plans. You can try to do things to the general population, but it takes, it's, it, people think that it can be done in a very, very short amount of time. We're talking about plans that take decades to unfold. Okay. And because society and civilization and technology change along the way, you have to make adjustments. I mean, come on, 20 years ago, we didn't even have HD TV. And you right. know, 20, 30 years ago, you know, the, 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 technology speed was was very very small short by comparison so yeah i that's that's where we are right now i mean is we're coming down what 40 days left to the beginning of whatever the the new chaos is going to be yeah you're right there there is some chaos in in there but at the highest levels you can 
yeah, you, you, uh, can you make this big giant sweeping change and change the world instantly? No. It takes a long time and, and you have to tweak things along the way. So interesting. It's been so nice talking to you. I yeah. really appreciate you taking the time. No worries at all. Um, um, the best way to describe you is a conspiracist or what do you, what do you prefer? Conspiracy, YouTube, con- YouTube. conspiracy. How about conspiracy advocate? How about that? There are conspiracies. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm a huge believer in them. Look, I guess I, I just worry that makes you sound like you're in favor of conspiracies. Well, no, I believe uh, I'm a little different in that I believe in the greater good. Meaning, I'm different from other conspiracy guys. Where other conspiracy guys think that every conspiracy is sinister and made by black hats with guys that twirl their their mustaches. And it's like, no, mm-hmm. for me, it's like, look, do the ends justify the means? That's what it always has been for me, which is how I qualify a conspiracy. I look at a conspiracy and I go, okay, what are they trying to do here? You know, I know it's like, oh, it's, it's horrible. It's awful what they're trying to do. It's like, no, what are they trying to do? And are they doing it this way because they know you could not vote on something like this? Are you making changes to civilization okay. and your population because you know the decisions you can't make? You, you, you've heard it. Like, you know, would you let a child die to cure cancer? And, right. and then it changes. Would you allow your own child to die? And that's, of course, becomes the impossible decision. The average person can't make it. Well, governments have to make these decisions. And militaries have to make the decisions. So, uh, you know, so not that I'm a fan of conspiracies, but do I think... You know, is it for the greater good? And sometimes, you know, which is why I get in trouble sometimes with the conspiracy world, which is, you know, they come back. It's like, no, no, it's got to be an absolute. You always have to do things, you know, for it has has to be good intentions. It's like, yeah, but sometimes, you know, the what's the old Star Trek saying? The needs of the many. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much. I I hope to speak to you again um, going forward, and I hope you have a really nice rest of your day. Yeah, yeah, and I will send you the um, the last, I don't know, five or six of rants I I did this year on, it should help, you know, send them to your guy. And uh, I will, I will. Hopefully they'll clarify some things. Thank you very much. Take care. All right, have a good one. Bye. You too, bye-bye.